Hello. Hey, welcome to Tone Talk with Marcus yeah. Hansky and Dave Friedman and Bob Bradshaw as our special guest. Hey, everybody. <laughs> with uh, sem semi maybe crippled internet slightly, but we're we're gonna we're gonna make do here. <laughs> a little we're, bit. We're, Jesus. We'll do the yeah. best we can. That's yeah, why we get the slight nice, slow motion um, effect on your face. Yeah, and uh, I like the. Um, the, the propeller fan going there like a plane is crashing into the top of my head yeah <laughs> why not it's a good look yeah it's friday night yeah it's friday night we we got some tone juice happening <laughs> yeah and uh yeah, we, you guys may hear some echo cut in and out who knows um it, there's yeah guys just deal with it i'm sorry um, we're going to do the best we can. Yeah, just pretend we've got a, a, a an RB7 reverb pedal plugged in tonight for everybody. Oh. Yeah, and a slight tremolo going at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> right now, that's what the fan's doing. It's kind of making me seasick. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, okay, I can go this. There you go. How's that? No. That's fine, but you know, on, on our end, we see this slow motion because your 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 probably internet's quite not quite fast enough, so it's like <laughs> you got a slow motion video going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, everybody's. Uh, Mark, can I get a Big Mac with cheese on an apple pie? Yeah, sure, man. Go go to McDonald's. Have fun. You don't you don't want fries with that? Shit. The apple pies at McDonald's aren't what they once were. No, nothing like no. what it was once. I remember was. the old days. The apple pies at McDonald's were pretty good. They came out hot. You know, it was, it, 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 they were. And I like the cherry pies too. Those yeah, were those were good. They're crispy. They were good. And and now it's just a pile yep. of shit. Just what <laughs> the fuck is that? There's so so much. Um, Food that I used to love as a kid, just different, you know, regional things that, that I couldn't wait when I got back uh, here to, to the East Coast, you know, six years ago. Um, wise potato chips, man. And yeah. uh, what else? Uh, uh, forget the, the toast cheese. Those um, peanut butter crackers. Oh, um, oh I know. Know. The, the yeah. orange, orange, bright yeah. orange, with hideous, yeah. hideous butter in the middle. Yes, yeah. uh, I can eat a ton of those. Yes, yeah. I, used I used to, to and yeah. but they but just they don't taste quite the same anymore. No, no. none, none of changing. it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that I recently yeah. tasted, tasted that was really close to original Coke, Coke, like when I was a kid, yeah. like you would get a Coke in a bottle. Was oh, yeah, it like, like just like burns, burns your throat, throat out and swallow all the best kind yeah. of Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, well Mexican, Mexican Coke. Coke. Yeah. Is that something new for you, Mark? <laughs> well, I guess so, where you are in Florida, right? Well, I am in Florida, yeah. We have, you know, I guess they import it because you guys are over in California, right? Yeah. Super common here. <laughs> really? Mexican Coke? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah pretty much. Put real sugar in it instead of yes. yeah, corn syrup. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much any corner store here. I'm yep. right by Circus Liquor. They got it at Circus Liquor. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, the old the old clown there. Yeah, that's yeah. Place to go. <laughs> Man, it's a long it's it's a, it's a uh, it's posh place compared to what it used to be. It's like yeah, they really remodeled it, and it's like crazy selection yeah. of wine and walk-in beer cooler and the whole. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, we it's a great it's a great liquor keggers, store. Man. Yeah, exactly. We'd exactly. have keggers in Landau's backyard, man, and, and, and we'd always go there and get a, get a big old barrel of booze. Yep. Yeah, when he lived right down the street here, right? Yeah, and uh, what was Camellia. Yeah. 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 This is funny. Uh, Bradshaw's becoming an effects unit. <laughs> Wow. He has wow. achieved singularity. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk gear. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, the yeah, point, man. point of the show. So, what did we leave out? Yeah. What did we leave out? 
Um, what are some see, of your favorites? Well, one thing I did remember was you, you went into early on the um, the SPX 90 being like the first Yamaha box. You, did, you forgot to mention the Rev 7. Remember the Rev 7? Yeah, shit, you're right. That was, With the, the was that the one, first? Not the first MIDI effect. The first MIDI effect was the D1500. And you you did say that. I love the, the D1500 the, still. The, the beloved D1500, yes. yes. Yeah. I know you were a huge fan of that. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think I got like five of them the still. <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a rack full of six of them once. And they were all running... <laughs> But yeah, it's kind of wild. They, the, they were a good one. I really like those. You know. Yeah, there was a certain thing but about most of the stuff uh, you talked about. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I totally, hundred percent agree with man as being the the, the, the cream of the crop. Yeah. You know, uh, PM forty two is the best ever to play. Yeah. Never been beaten, as far as I'm concerned. No way. Um. But um, but the, the glaring one, man, the fucking uh -oh. glaring. Uh, 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 miss, no, no, no love. The freaking CAE three plus preamp, bro. You, you barely gave it a fucking nod. I'm and scared. none of those motherfuckers had them in their racks. Those, those guys, who are those guys that were on? <laughs> Oh, Michael Torrin nice must guy. have one. He must have he one. He didn't have one, and that the guy with all the stuff in his rack. Oh, that's a glaring. That's a glaring air. That is a major fucking faux pas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> for for somebody that is like a preamp guy, I did not see one in there, man. Hmm. You're right. And yeah. You Rev's guys guy. didn't really. There was no love there for the three plus, and you know, I, I, I've, I've only, I've only stopped, stopped making them a couple, couple of years, years ago. ago. He says he, he has, has one. one. Oh, he has one. Does, does he? he? Yes, he does. does. Yeah. Oh, good. I didn't see it though. I was looking really hard. A lot of Soldano. A lot of purple. A lot of purple. A lot of purple. Yeah. A lot of purple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got yeah. the uh, three, three plus. plus as well. I like the SE version of it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's just I don't know. They did something a little extra. Yeah, yeah we just we you know it needed a, a little tweak there, there, there. I guess. Um, I don't I understand, understand a lot of these mods that, that, that some guys, guys doing, doing these, these days. days doing doing right, right. Right. Quite oh, you mean that guy Bruno or whatever? That guy? Uh... Yeah, he made a nice. Uh, he's a good he's guy. A good guy. I mean, he's promoted the thing for years, but he's a self-proclaimed expert. And you know, he wasn't there when it was built. Built. Or when or when, the, the, when, when when any, any uh, 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 decisions, decisions were made, were made towards, towards uh, uh, how, you know, you know uh, keeping, keeping the thing the alive, alive in production. production. As you As know, you know Dave, Dave, getting, getting parts, parts these days, days or, or, any, or any, throughout, throughout the lifetime of a product, product is, uh, is a, a struggle, struggle sometimes. I wouldn't know anything I'm about a that. Horrible <laughs> echo right now. Like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, talking and talking, talking, talking. I don't know what hey, to do about that. How do I, how do I... Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're the, 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 the connection is really bad, unfortunately. Yeah, it is, I guess, huh? Yeah, we've got to, unfortunately, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Oh, we're going to have to suffer through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, um, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What, what, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, about getting parts. It's a, yeah. It's a it's, love... You know, the, you, you, oh, it's just, it's just a, a, a nightmare, especially when you're trying to maintain consistency in production. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
keep getting uh, tube devices, trying to get uh, them to have um, some consistency in, in, in manufacturers of, you know, uh, the, the beginning of the, of the line ends up sounding just like the end of the line of that particular, uh, you know, uh, run. It's mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. And uh, parts, parts tolerances, tolerances and stuff. stuff. We went um, to three or four different versions of pots, and everybody's like, yeah, they don't have the same CTS pots in them. Well, you know, sorry, the CTS pots got very uh, inconsistent, and their the tolerance is very great lately. And it, it, it just got, got uh, too difficult to try to get maintain consistency. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, went we went to Vimex pots, pots and then we ended up in Alphas, you know, you know we went we through various, various, you know, when, you know, when a product, product has a, has a, uh, uh, a lifespan, a lifespan like, this like this thing has, thing has. And my God, I don't know what's going to happen nowadays. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. If I'm ever going to, you know, make them do another round or not. It's just a whole lot of work to keep them going, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just you now, right? You just do everything, right? Kinda. Yeah. yeah. I dug my dug soul, my you know. <laughs> it's probably hard to even keep your foot controllers going with the parts shortages. It's been brutal, man. The I'm, screens I'm just and about stuff? to uh what's that? The screens and everything. Oh Switches, my God. Screens. Well, yeah, I'm, I've just had to redesign um, the expander boards to uh, uh, accept, you know, surface mount LEDs. Mm -hmm. Finally got that worked out. I mean, I'm at the, I'm at the verge of, of having another run. I'm so close. Um, but it, it's, 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 it's been a changeover from... Um, um, my, my support, support that, that I had, I had in had Southern California, California of all, all my various my vendors, vendors buddy, 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 that, I, that I used to use, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, having, having to find new vendors, vendors here, here in, in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is difficult, difficult you know, and, and it's, 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 it's a slow it's process, process trying to trying find, to find um, 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 uh, 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 vendors, vendors support you in small, small quantities, quantities too. too. I can't yeah. do high volume, you know. You know. Yeah. So, so you know, it's just just the way it is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, a got question, question from, from more, more guitars. guitars. Dave, Dave just, just picked up my, my fifth Freeman amp and sister, and sister classic, classic rock, rock masterpiece. masterpiece. We'll get we'll in, 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 in two weeks, weeks getting, getting a spare 5881s. 5881 what, what to buy us at? at? And how to we, try with a Neo cream back. I don't really like those Neo things much. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, they're light. That's about all I can say. You know, they don't they don't sound that. Uh, they, uh, I mean, it's okay. You'd have to try it, see if you like it. But I, I think, you know. A nice heavy speaker that's going to hurt your back over the run, long run is much better. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the fifty-eight eighty ones. I mean, we buy some to forty uh, milliamps a tube from the factory on that amp. So um, that's what you should do it at. Um, and, and it's that's his fifth amp, man. And just use yeah, it's your fifth amp, so you get a prize. I'm not sure what, but you get a prize. <laughs> I was gonna say, Any, anyone that buys five amps, great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. he's almost got the whole collection. No, there go. there's a lot more than that. That's true. There's a lot That's of amps now. True. How many I are in the line? I don't know. <laughs> I would literally have to sit here and think about it for a minute. So I'm going to put headphones on and turn off my speakers. And see if that's better for you. Yeah. See, I don't get any. It's sounding echo. better right now. Well, well sort of. 
Why did why do I get so much echo? It might have something to do with your even your internet connection, maybe because it, it's not strong. That's for sure. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, How's that? that? No, no, I still hear the echo. echo. But if I turn my speakers off, you don't. Hello. Yeah, you turn your speakers off. Hear. Did it go away? Yep. Yep. Hello. 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 All right. Yep. Should I should I get headphones too? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you should. Uh, okay. <laughs> It'll I'll help. It. It'll help. See, so guys, see how much we love you. We're going to try to fix it. Uh, thanks for the super chat. More guitars. Appreciate it. I know we got a few other questions here. Yeah, this one's for Bob while Dave's working on it. Bob, can you talk about the rig you built for Mick Mars for 1987, 1989, when he was using the Jose Modern I know he used 3,000s. Um, oh, boy. Um... Yeah. I can tell you what I just did for him. I can't tell you what I did for him five years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, it's... the echo got, got work. Yeah, we still got that echo thing echo. going. Um, um, hmm. Basically, is his sounds been very similar throughout all the time that I worked with him from the '80s on up until just recently. And it's a uh, multiple amps, all running at the same time, and and um, that whole garage sale look of amplifiers is what makes up his his big fat rhythm sound that he uses there's a there's a there's a a, a, a soldano is a main, the main amplifier slo 100 which drives a um uh vht classic power amp that's basically it that and um uh and then there's uh another marshall head that's on there. There's a um, um, there was a Jose Mar Marshall for a while. That's not there anymore. Um, but it uh, but some other Marshalls in there. The, the, basically, the um, the Soldano um, uh, superseded the the Jose Marshall. It took over basically. Mm. That that was the the crunch sound. You know. And then uh, the um, uh, Rivera uh, bonehead thing, that whole subwoofer deal, that's part of it too. Um, and um, that's about it. That's mainly it. And, you know, a little detuned harmonizer sound, which is very important to him. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of it you know it's been that way for for a long time what know? did he use for the d tune uh uh even tied harmonizer okay i was <laughs> i was uh flown up to uh was it um seattle i believe it was seattle or, or uh, the paramount theater one of these places i was um <laughs> flown uh, up to seattle because he wasn't getting a sound and, and it wasn't happening something was wrong and his main tech guy wasn't with him at this point there was um some other guy 
taking care of his his stuff at the time. I was brought up there, and I walk in, um, and uh, right before sound check, before they're con, I, I'm looking at all the gear, and I'm okay. This looks right. Everything's fine. It says, yeah, everything's running. It's just, it's just not the sound. It's not the sound I want. And I look at the the even tied harmonizer, and I see it's in bypass. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, um, well, there, there's no there's no little red light here on you know the, those square bypass buttons you know they have over there um, on the right hand left hand side. And I went boop, hit that button, and wah, there it was. <laughs> there's my sound. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh thank you very much um so uh that that fixed that so well that's good i know he yeah. ended up he ended up selling a lot of those marshals yes i think Rich, richard fortis had didn't he richard fortis have uh one of mcmars marshals yeah richard fortis got one of the main amps that he used on dr feelgood and stuff the one had a bunch of holes that rudy laren had drilled all through the front of it Mm -hmm. um and wound up selling it to you know he never had you know it, it's funny the, the, all these um these uh stories and these rumors and all kinds of things and, and um i remember ed van halen never had modified marshals by jose nope uh, he maintained them Jose maintained his amps for him and stuff and, 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 and kept them running for him, but he didn't have modded marshals from the mods came about for Mick. Cause Mick wanted that big Brown sound, you know, and, um, Jose told him, he said, look, um, I don't mod his amps. You need, you know, Something else. I'll do it. <laughs> He'd call it a special mod. He'd do a special mod for you. And, you, you know, he put that giant gain stage in, you know, that yeah. fucking gnarly extra tube. Mm -hmm. And the, just jammed right into the front end of the, of the amp. You know, that was basically what it was, was just a gain stage at the very beginning um, of the input of the amplifiers. That's what it was. Yeah. So, I always describe it as well. The the basic mod was a gain stage shoved in front of a stock four input Marshall with a exactly. master, master volume added. Yep, yep. And so you could turn it. Yeah. And there were some other yeah. ones that had clipping diodes and some things in it too that he did later. And uh, right, know, That's two true. variations yes. of the same theme. But, yep. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I probably worked on a hundred of them now. Literally, yeah. I mean, we used to have them in all the time. It was crazy. Wow. Um, we got a question from Touchdown Touchdown Jesus. Uh, what is it okay. in Steve, Steve Stevens' rig that gives that clanky sort of chirpy quality? Is it something in the mid-range voicing? His hands, assuming it can be from the amp, does the Steve oh, man, Stevens? It's, it's, it's just have his it? hands. Yeah, his hands. It's a stringy Marshall kind of sounding amp, and when when he attacks the strings, it just gets this little chirp. That I like to call it the mm. chirp, and uh, I love that sound. That's awesome. Mm. But that's in his hands, mm. and a stringy style Marshall style amp. You know, that's like you know, it, it, it yeah. totally does that. Also, a, you know, kind of a weaker pickup, not super hot. Mm -hmm. you know? I you know that little chirp those guys get. You know, some of them they get a little chirp on the string. It kind of mm -hmm. like it's fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got a super chat from when, Steve Malt. When guitar players played man's man amps, <laughs> unlike the Kemper. <laughs> the Kemper. Yeah. True. Nothing makes me sadder than seeing a Kemper. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't look in my living room. It, I, I mean, I'm true. No, like on stage, it's just like yeah, the rock concert. Oh, yeah. oh Kemper. 
I wouldn't do that. I would never do that live ever. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, th thanks, yeah. Steve. I don't know if you had a question, but I didn't see it. Um, let's see, Jonathan Shap, Bob. Is there anything you would that you think you worked on in the '80s that rock musicians aren't doing today that they should take from the '80s? God, no. Oh, we got to stretch your memory. Work in the eighties. I don't know. If you think um, work in the eighties, rap musicians don't do today. I'd say use real amps. <laughs> well, that's for sure. <laughs> Should use real yeah. amps. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I never. I don't quite understand that whole. You know, like. Everyone's, you know, well, the Kemper is easy to travel with, and I can do this, and I can do that, and we'll cut down on the rig size and all that stuff. And, and, then, the, and then the larger bands that actually do the modeling rigs and stuff then have a full rack full of fucking modelers. That's a huge fucking rack. <laughs> I like going, yeah. is that really like less than, say, I don't know, an, uh, how about a combo amp? Is that really less than a combo <laughs> amp? No. You know, like if you want to size That's down, you use a combo amp or something, and you know you can use a little yeah, pedal board yeah. combo amp, and you know you got a good tone, and and it's small and it's light, it's easy to travel with, and there you go. Yeah, those uh, those uh, 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 fractals are creeping up in spaces, man. Now they're three space. What happens when they go to four? Now they're gonna it's gonna be right back to you know carrying around a bunch of shit. Yep. Yep. Exactly. They're getting heavier. Uh, here's Steve's question. I don't have a specific, oh, I don't, he doesn't have a specific question, but wanted to say thank you so much for doing this show. I recently discovered the other episodes on YouTube and I've been geeking out on previous content. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Right yeah, on, we, bro. Yeah, we've been doing this show, uh, almost six or seven, six years, seven years, six years. How many have you done now? Hundreds? This is 133. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. A lot of fucking episodes. Yeah. Kind of seems like yeah. yesterday we had like Grover Jackson on. <laughs> yeah. That was the first one. Wow. Was that the first episode? Yeah. Oh, shit. Damn. Yep. First one. Thanks, Steve. Um, There's some good tidbits in that first one, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, by the speak, speaking of that, I'm going to be going through this weekend. I'm going to be pulling out a few clips here and there of some videos and just create some shorts. And uh, it'll, there'll be some like funny clips and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get a couple this weekend. Is that is, are you gonna are you gonna do the one where I'm with Jakey Lee and he he just tells me, did I ever tell you about the time Mick Mars called me a slant eyed Japanese bastard? <laughs> you want me to do that? Yeah, look at him and I go, he did what? Wow. <laughs> I mean, he threw it out right at me right in the show, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that would be but good. But he meant it here. lovingly. <laughs> <laughs> well, he went on. He went on to actually. Term of endearment. The, the the funny thing, this all went on. This all um, went to the rock press and everything after that show. You know, like yeah, it, it, it went all out there. Is Jakey Lee calls blah blah blah. Big Mars a racist. Yeah, no, that's not what he said. Because he went on to say, well, no, he's not a racist. It was just a time, and he was pissed off. And <laughs> Right, it was one, a one-time... <laughs> one of course, time the rock time. press just goes, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's funny. Yeah. That uh, show was funny. That was funny. Uh, Stephen Massey, hey, Bob, is... Joe Perry still using the rig you built from like four years ago. He uses a Supro and a Marshall together, or am, am I mistaken? Oh, he's changed his stuff, man. He he, he sees know. something shiny, and you know he he's on to something else. Mm. He's a seeker, that Joe. Yeah, that's you know, true. He he's a seeker. He's always looking for something, and you know, um, I. I try to um, uh, uh, realize all his crazy ideas that he wants to try and stuff. Oh, I'm game, you know. If he wants to do it and he wants to uh, 
spend the money, um, um, I'll go wherever he wants to go. And I kind of did that this past time. Mm. Um, what he went for, he wanted little amps. He, he, he wanted, <laughs> he had me modify these, these little cord practice amps to put line outs on them so that he could reamp them with more power, you know? Oh, it, 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 it was like a little cube thingy. Yeah. That had yeah. effects built into them and stuff, too. Yeah. And he wanted to line out And he it? liked the way it sounded in his dressing room. And he goes, why can't I have this on stage? You know? And I, I, I just want it louder on stage. And I want to have it on stage. Um, and I'm like, well, I'll put a line out on it. And you can pump it back through you know a power amp he had you know power amps and stuff to do that with um fryettes he had you know like the you know the 50 50 fryette well that's enough power to re-power this little cube into sure. something yeah and and then i so i did that and then he wanted a little old tweed amp because he was used to just plugging into them in the studio and it sounds great i just wanted you know and they wanted him to keep his volume down you know his rig looks like a garage sale and it's just like you know tons of stuff all mix and matched mm -hmm. oh yeah and he loves that he that's mm -hmm. his thing that's his shtick you know and, then, and brad on the other side of the stage a couple of 212 cabs or something and mm -hmm. then you go on the other side and it's just like this wall of Marshalls and High Watts and it's crazy. Oh, a couple of your amps in there too, Dave. Yeah, I, yeah you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I went okay. Um, so he so he decides he wants to use these little amps, but he wants nice studio reverb because we're in this real dry room. They're doing their residency in um in vegas right mm -hmm. and so they've got a purpose-built room a thx purpose-built performance space you know the theater basically where they do their thing so they're not really touring it's sort of a fixed installation they go in you know and they you know have you know five shows a week or whatever they do you know and, and you know it's residency so this is the environment in which he wants this rig to work and, and they're trying to keep his volume down on stage i don't know why i'm going into all this i mean it's not what the question was but um no it's fine you know I, i'm just saying it, it, it i got shoved in there joe was great he didn't remember that i had done stuff for him back in like 93 you know for the get a grip tour i don't think he even remember <laughs> he had no clue that i had worked with him before mm -hmm. or he, he didn't let on you know in this time but he trusted me and i went and i built up this rig that utilized little amps that we mic'd up and either and took a signal off of um either with a direct box or filtering and such you know that kind of thing or with just another microphone that went uh to a, a post effects system basically that that had a bricasti reverb and um uh, another echo and that was like the post effects so so he could, and we used an API uh, 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 mixer, uh, single rack space mixer. Mm. So I, because I wanted, okay, I'm going to give you um, super high end effects here, good quality, you know, not pedals. You want really nice reverb. We're going to fucking pump you through a Bricasti and you're going to hear really nice reverb on stage surrounded by 
you know, your little amplifiers the way you want. So the whole point was to try to keep the volume down on stage, provide them with a studio quality uh, sound for these ambient effects. And then you had a chain of, of you know, pedals and stuff that hit the front ends of the amps too, you know, so that was mm-hmm. part of the deal too. And then, you know, multiple locations for control. So three different locations on stage, one way down the, the ego ramp, one at his main stage, and then one back that the tech had mm-hmm. that controlled everything. Um, I like that, the ego ramp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was a trip, you know, it was interesting. And, and, you know, uh, I got that all working for him and he loved it. He was so excited. Um, I didn't have good success with his tech, the guy who's not with him anymore. So I'm not going to say names, but the guy was, didn't want me there. Mm. It was a fight basically it was like a it was a struggle pretty much not for joe joe was totally fine but as i had to fucking deal with this stubborn tech guy mm. that i know who it um is. wanted it to be the way it was it was very um you know you've seen this in this business you've got to fucking get on the side of the tech guys you gotta be you know cool with them and you know support them they're there for you you're there for them but you were ultimately there for the fucking driver you know what i'm saying the guy that fucking owns the rig and you know when you've got when you're dealing with a a um, relatively complex rig that guy doesn't want anything to do with, it becomes a struggle. And it's a pain in the ass. And ultimately, that guy's no longer with him. And um, I'm still doing stuff for him. So, you know, it's the way it goes. There you go. You know. Is that Marco? (laughs) (laughs) um he's not there anymore yeah i I know (laughs) and he had another guy too there were two guys joe had two guys oh yeah because joe does so many guitar changes it's like uh, yeah and, and that guy the other guy took care of the guitars yeah he strung them he maintained them kept them working Hmm. you know (laughs) yep uh that goes way back i remember seeing aerosmith back permanent vacation and back uh like uh you know, the, the rec- love and elevator thing after that. And mm. Right. Yeah. I swear yeah. to God, there was 15 to 20 different guitars through the set. Uh-huh. Oh, different yeah. Guitar every song. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. A yep. totally different guitar, totally different style. Totally, yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. And and I, I mean, I even said back then, I go, holy shit, man. I hate to be the guy that has to take care of these. Right. Like, but you know. he had two guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, man. Dallas Shoe deals with all that shit with fucking Edge. He's one guy. Yeah. You know, he does it all. So, you know, you get a good guy, you're, you know. Hey, while we're there, let's talk, about, let's talk about that rig. What's that? While we're there, huh? let's talk about that rig. The Edge, oh, man. You've done a lot of rigs for him over time. Plenty, man. Yeah. Yes. Tons. He, and he's another guy who uses like a hodgepodge of stuff. Yeah, but that I mean that those. Yeah, rich- it's but it's you know it's funny too, but it's uh, it 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 is um, fundamentally um, it's simple. The boxes. 
it it really is it's 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 a big long string of pedals yes um but then it just splits out to eight different amplifiers including um you know x effects fractals now mm -hmm. part of it you know um and what yeah but it's a it's, it's a series string it's a series string and it's mono mm -hmm. it just it just goes through a string of stuff because here's a guy that's got a lot of records out there he's been doing it a long time and he's specific with what he uses and he wants to use whatever he used on the record live so that you know that introduces um uh, you know it means you got a lot of loops you're dealing with you know because it's got to be a whatever whatever you know and um wasn't there a bunch early on, like a bunch of rack mount pieces that really weren't really, shall, shall we say, geared towards putting in front of an amp? Oh, yeah, because he would do stuff in, in the studio. He, he would plug in anything, you know, they could be, who knows, who whoever he's working with, they could be plugging in anything. It didn't matter whether it was a pedal or not, Yeah, you know. Now, it could be a combination of things that, would, that created a sound. And we would have to duplicate that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And a lot of times it would be a combination of pedals for a particular weird sound, you know. But um, I love the fact it's mono, though. What's that? I love the fact it's mono. Oh, it's totally. It's you mono know, all the way down the line. I mean, it's like twenty-four series loops, maybe more, and then um, eight. Eight sources, eight or eight, not sources, but amps. Yeah, a couple of boxes, marshals, a lot of fenders, and fractals. Right. Yeah. The fenders are what the tweeds that he uses. Yeah, his his edge version, whatever that is. Oh, they yeah. made a they made a second version, huh? Interesting. They I did, know. yeah. They made some edge deluxe or something, I think. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think I saw something about that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, modern vintage, Dave. What about the Karsten's Black Flag? Made you want to buy one? Can you describe it more? How is the Naked Amp Number Four on Reverb different than the Mark II? Karsten's amp's pretty cool, man. Uh, it, it was um, it was just a little combo. I was at Chicago Music Exchange doing a clinic, and we were in their upstairs uh, offices room, and they were bringing out these cool vintage guitars and stuff for us to look look at. I was with Steve Stevens, and uh, you know they brought out like uh, you know '59. Les Paul and a few other cool, really cool pieces, you know, that belong to certain people. And and uh, and they had that amp up there, man, and we were just plugged into it. And, that, you know, that Les Paul into that little amp, it was like, you know, Jimmy Page, Black Dog. That described it right there, man. It was just like, right. it was just like this dynamic, cool combo, but just sounded fucking great. And I was like looking at it going, God, I think I want to buy one. I like it so much. Hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't necessarily want to buy any amps. I make my own amps and stuff. You know, it's just like something's got to really make me want to buy it, you know. And, uh, and I, really, I really did. And we, we've become friends. Uh, and uh, I don't know. He keeps saying, yeah, I got I to gotta get you one. <laughs> Brian, I want one. And what kind of, what, is, what amp is this day? There's this guy uh, Brian uh, Carstens. He he used to be uh, the head repair guy at Chicago Music Exchange, Chicago. Oh. And right. he does that uh, Grace amp. He did it with Billy Corrigan. Uh, mm. It's kind of a really cool, uh, modern meets vintagey looking, very s slim on features. It's cool, cool amp, right. cool amp. Yeah. But he makes another amp called the Black Dog. That's like this little combo. That's just like this rock and roll raging 
Marshall esque right. sort of cool little combo. That just sounds great. Mm. Um, mm. The Gray Sam's cool too. It's a much higher gain. That was done with Billy and the. Uh, I don't know how he makes the head boxes. If you look at the head box on a picture of it, it's it's curved. I don't know how they toll exit. I I just don't. I don't understand. It, mm. It's a work of art with the toll exit. Yeah. But anyway, nice guy. Knows what he's doing. He's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. And cool. then he asked about this uh, naked number four on reverb. Yeah. I don't know if that's really it's number four of of uh some era of it. It it's uh I made the black version uh I only made for a short while, so it's kind of a rare, rare one. How is it different from the Mark II that I'm going to do? We made a few tweaks to it um, with my buddy Reza on the Mark II, and um, if I ever make those. <laughs> so, you ever get to it? That's a cool one on Reverb, though, but it's, it, boy, they want a lot of money for it. How much is it going for? Uh, close to seven thousand. Wow. Wow. Um, That's what you got to do. You got to discontinue things, and the price goes up. Yep. <laughs> either, that, either that, or just talk about gear on the show, and the price goes up. It seems like. <laughs> well, yeah. that's, what was, that's what I was about to do. <laughs> I know those, those guys. Those guys last time, man. They're all, all the, they're down there with their they're, phones. Going wait, I'm flying it on the thing right now. Every time you met, every time you mention one little thing, dudes are looking down. <laughs> Pretty it's funny. kind of true. Like I, 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 I had said I like that. Um, Digitech for a while was making this little reverb pedal, the Polara. And oh, uh, it's great. Those are great. It, yeah, yeah the Polara is a great reverb. It had a great plate reverb in it. Like I thought it sounded yep. good. And yes. we met and a good spring the too. And the price kept going up. <laughs> yeah. That's so, good. Yeah, yeah. That's the repackaged RB7. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, from yeah. The, the hardwire stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. All that hardwire. And stuff. The, I, what was I was trying to think too of that other one, that uh, what was the black one? Remember that they did. Oh, the um, supernatural or something they called the reverb. Yes, the reverb. exactly. Yeah. yeah, that was an RB7 that was tweaked. Yeah. And yeah, Digitech black. was doing good shit then. Yeah, I know, man. I, I'm resolved. Those delay pedals. I was great. so close to doing something with those guys too, and and it fell apart. Mm. And I was so bummed because we were yeah. really close. We were, yeah, we were really close to um, doing some switching things. I, oh, really? they flew me there. And I brought a system to show them, and I had a big old presentation with all these guys. And it was right when, um, right when Michael Jackson died. Yeah, hmm. it was like that week. Yeah, well, I was there at their place in Utah, and when when Michael passed away, and yeah. Came on the radio and flipped everybody out, and yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But they went out of. What happened to Digitech? I mean, Harman, they, I mean, I don't know. They they were all part of um, you know the Harmon group and everything, and and, and you know um, they're all under that wing, and um, yeah. Um, They had some kind of effect type multi effect thing and a floor based deal. And they they wanted to do something with me. And I was like, we were talking numbers and everything at this meeting at this at this um, when they brought me there. I thought, I, and, and so I and I got to go through um, like the 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 digitech stock room man and they they were just giving me shit i came home with all kinds of fucking shit because they were like you know wooing me so to speak yeah. i was like really happy it's like oh this is gonna be great you know and then they gave me a bunch of gear and a 
came home with a fuck ton of whammy pedals and a bunch of other crap, you know. And awesome. they bought the, the 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 guy that the head guy at the time. He said. I brought I had brought my laptop and I was in a you know a, a conference room thing and I'm showing pictures of of my stuff you know give them a little give them a little a little sell you know pushing my quote unquote brand I guess mm -hmm. and um, at one point the, the the main dude goes hey this is this is pretty cool all these pictures showing you with with uh, Digitech gear in them. I'll give you a hundred bucks per photo that you have of uh, your stuff with Digitech gear in it. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to go back and trawl my archive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, and I got a shit ton of them together for them too. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, some, hell yeah. And they, and they bought them. Like, okay. Oh wow! A hundred bucks per? Really? Okay. Look at that. And then uh, it 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 just all fell apart. It was crickets. And I was like, I, you know, they were all gung ho and they're all going to do it. We were going to get stuff going. We were, you know, like I said, we're talking numbers and everything at this meeting. And I figured, okay, um, let's uh, maybe something will become come of this you know? and they were all excited and i left and then they ended up going with do you remember they had some kind of gizmo that you could plug a fucking ipad into yeah you remember this you it was like a in floor that. effect thing yeah. where you plug your ipad into it and you use the ipad That's along good. with the built-in effects and stuff that this thing had or something. It was like just a kludge fest as far as I was concerned. And, and it kind of uh, edged me out. So, <laughs> so oh, well, okay. Well, shit They're going to go that way? Okay, go that way. You know, rather than building a, a looping system. So to speak. Oh, I see. I, I just looked it up. It was called the Digitech IPB10 programmable pedal board for iPad. Is yeah, that, yeah, is that what it was? Yeah. yeah iPad <laughs> the top of it. iPad oh in the top. Oh, my God. Of you imagine <laughs> stepping on an iPad? Control <laughs> imagine spilling your drink on top? Oh, Oops. my God. <laughs> 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 this, I'm what? looking at. This is what this is what they. I'm going to share this. I don't this. think so. Oh, God. That's so funny. I gotta find it Man. again um, on this screen. That's Are you gonna show it? Yeah, you want me to show it? Sure. Yeah, I want to see it. I okay. forgot what it looks like exactly. Yeah, hang on a second. Uh, oh, it's so funny. Like, oops. Yep. That was there. It, it is. There it is. <laughs> Oh, wow, man. and the iPad. I guess the iPad goes in here, and this like yeah. Piece. Oh yeah. The best. The best part is you got to think how much money they spent on developing that. Ouch! I know. Huge yeah. money. Why would they do? Oh, I mean, knowing God. that the iPad is going to change sizes, is going to change form and shape, and I mean, what yeah. A and you're locking that. yourself into a. You're trying to get in bed with Apple. Right. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then they had the pedal. Remember they had a pedal that could you could um yeah, download could whatever into it. Blow different stuff into it and in one minute it's a tube screamer. Next minute it's a delay. Mm hmm You know? Mm. That was that was actually kind of cool and it was very forward thinking, I think. Yeah. You know. I still have a couple of them. I don't even know if that website is still even active. I don't think we so. should try it again someday. But it, but it needed <laughs> the problem was, and then Apple comes along and and does the lightning connector, so the thirty pin gets blown out, and this thing was all thirty pin, mm. right? You know, the the big connector yeah. on the bottom of your fucking uh, your iPod, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's definitely. Give it and then, then technology marches on, man. 
you know? A horrible it, idea. It does. Uh, touchdown Jesus, Bob. Was Luke using a lot of Mesa amps when you were with him? Mesa 2C+. In the beginning, in the beginning yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wasn't it? Didn't you have like one of them slaved with a load resistor? And yeah. Two, two Coliseums yeah. or something, right? Yep. Something yeah. like that? That was the beginning. <laughs> the yeah. the kazoo amps. <laughs> 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 I, I was I watching that the other day. Day. I watched the thing was that he did where he, he's he's always so he, he's uh, he, I wish he wouldn't um uh, uh be so sorry for being a fucking pioneer man you know he yeah. he, he just kind of like some some reviewer said it sounded like a kazoo and he gets all bummed out about that it's like you know it takes a long time to fucking learn how all that fucking shit works mm -hmm. and yeah and he was right that, that that was brand new for him and then he was asked to do a, a starlix video which people love you know they love oh yeah that shit, you know Oh yeah, people and still go back to those videos. he gets all about the way it sounds and everything because you know, hey, you know, he made it sound great. You know, give me a fucking break. Are you kidding? The guy yeah, can do I think, anything. I think hindsight, you know, is on that. I mean, people can go back and listen to it and criticize it, but when we, when the video first came out, no like, man, I know. That was right? the sound of the time, man. Right, it was the sound of the time. Yeah. Everybody was. It was like, oh, that's the shit. That sounds great. Nobody said you had to turn all every fucking button on at once. Right. <laughs> right. You know, nobody said that that's what you do. Right. He wanted all that stuff. You know, it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. He wanted it all. It's not like I'm twisting his arm. <laughs> you know. So how long did I, I? I'm sure we covered this in the first episode when you were on. But how long did you tour with them? Oh my God! I started in 19 the summer. Summer I met him in summer of '84. Went out the uh, first time. Uh, he got that rig, that first rig, and um, uh, the isolation album was finished. Um, they had been like two years off, kind of between total four and isolation and this is 1985 mm. now now beginning of 1985 um that's when i started touring with him and that was a, a japan tour so i met him in the summer of 84 built the rig throughout summer and into fall of 84 january of of um 85 um, he comes to me and he goes, um, we're going to Japan. Um, I want you to go with me. Um, Dick Gall's not going to work for me anymore. And Dick Gall was his main guy. It's so like back then he had a guy, you know, <laughs> you know, guys doing dates and stuff. Didn't have their own guys. They had cartage companies, mm -hmm. you know, Dave, you yep. work for one. You know, yeah. and, and those guys, it could be a different crew setting you up, you know, from, you know, day to day. But Lugather had a guy who came along and, you know, did stuff for him because he needed someone. He always, he needed someone. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, he's, look. you know, he's, he's a fucking pure artist, man. Yeah, you he's know? not a he's technical guy. He's not a technical guy. guy. Yep. No, oh, yeah. and um, you're to plug the guitar. He needed, yeah, he needed help, and you know we tried. So, so now he doesn't have a guy anymore, but he's got me, and he kind of signed on with Andy. So Andy now is like doing his in town stuff. So between the two of us, we kind of like cover for him when he's in town. Mm -hmm. But he just didn't have a personal dude going around at every date. He had, you know, um, uh, Andy Brower and his crew of guys, you know, Dave, yeah. one of them, who uh, went and uh, did stuff 
on a uh, day-to-day basis setups and got him whatever he needed and got him going and pat him on the ass and said, okay, here you go. You know, <laughs> you're all good. Um, and then I would be there doing technical stuff, you know, to maintain the gear and, you know, the gear, um, I would hear about it later. Oh, something fucked up at this date, whatever. Um, mm. um, Brower's going to bring it by blah, 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 you know, and, you know, could you look at it for me? Okay, great. And, you know, so we would coordinate. Yeah. So between, you know, Andy and his service and me and my thing, we had him covered. You know, so well, for you, and for then I would time. tour with him. I would go out. So uh, 85 to 92 when my son was born, my first born son, um, I did every every live event, what, whatever it was, um, I would be there. For that whether it was touring with toto or live shows whatever one-offs things it was mm-hmm. different things that would happen you know but around town it was Bauer and his crew taking care of of him and me in, in the background so to speak so yeah that makes sense you know. yeah man, yeah. man you guys must and have then 92 when 92 was over uh, well, 92, my, my son came. I, I, I stopped touring with him, and Thomas Nordegg came on mm. as his guy. And um, Thomas went out, and then he had a succession. Uh, Jerry Sabatino did it for a long time. You know Jerry? Yeah. You know, remember Jerry? Yeah. yeah. Jerry did it. Um and then uh, he had a uh, crew guys in Europe. He had Baron Beatmall Troy who took care of him, and another guy whose name escapes me, another uh, English fellow who did it. And then I came back in late uh, 90s. I started doing stuff because they weren't working as much and they were doing like weekend warrior type things and Toto that is you know Mm. so i came back in and and toured and would come in and out of town and i would juggle that with whatever i had going on you know it got crazy there for a while and um and then uh up until 2007 from, from late 90s to 2007 I, I did everything pretty much as well. Or or I would tag team with um, the guys in Europe, so the, the Europe guys um, that he had. Sometimes they would do it. I would do domestic things if there were things in the States or uh, Japan, things like that. And then the Europe guys would do the Europe stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And then um, that was up until 2006. Seven and and uh, when they officially went on hiatus, so to speak, and he started touring Steve Lukather band stuff, and we also did um, um, uh, El Grupo was another band that he did as well. Mm. Um, and I'll never, and I did all that stuff. I'll never yeah. forget the. Uh... I don't know when this was exactly. Time escapes me, but there was a time when you know this was later at uh, Chris Johnson's place. You know, post yeah. Andy Brown. Yep. And uh, they set up his rig or something in the hallway there because supposedly there were some noise problems and this and that. They had you on the phone and this and that. And I I was there because my shop was there at the time, and and uh, they just like yeah they're, they're complaining about this noise problem. And then I deduced that, wait a minute, turn the guitar off. Noise is gone. Noise went away. Silent. Silent. And I go, it's fucking pickup noise. <laughs> fucking pickup. <laughs> yeah. like, really? Fuck. Good God. <laughs> you know how many times I would, 
I'd say the same thing. Oh, you have a noise? Well, how about turning the volume on down on the guitar? Oh, so it went away. Oh, oh. Great. Okay. Yeah, you were you were okay. just like fuck up. Fuck, you wasted my fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. That's so funny. Oh, hey, perfectly quiet. We got a question from Leonard Rodriguez. Thanks, man. Uh, enjoying the show, Dave and Bob. Do you know anything about Jimmy Page's rig on the No Quarter tour in the nineties? His floor no. controller was huge. It's a it's no. It's just that's that's Cornish. That's a P Cornish board. That's yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's changed on. for years. I, it's the same. Right. Level. From what I understand, he's not willing to give up much money to have it changed. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh yeah. He's not a big fender, apparently, Mister Page. From what <laughs> I understand. <laughs> wow. It's not like he doesn't have a lot of, enough money. Yeah, I know. Well, that's why he has a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but he spent on his house. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. That fucking crazy house he his has. Castles. The castle. Yeah. Right. It's a historical monument. It's beautiful. I need a new moat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tim Berry, thanks for the super chat. How close is the Phil X low gain to the small box plexi channel? Uh, it's different, man. It's. Uh, Still an extra gain stage in the fill X that the Plexi wouldn't have in the small box. So it's, uh, it's, I mean, I guess you could dial it in similar in, in the lower gain modes, but it's, it's really not quite the same thing. Okay. All right. All right. So let's talk about 80s gear here for a second. So I, I, I have one. Let's, let's go, let's go really far back so okay those early rigs those really early rigs before all that kind of cool shit came out oh i know another one too yeah what was in it i mean i used to see a lot of those ibanez pieces and stuff that came late well i guess that was later but oh, those you you whatever yeah. you, you those were gross I know, but they were in, like, what was the earliest shit you used in these rigs? Um, there was there was a uh, roll and delay that Buzzy had. Oh, like two space? No, single space. Single and space. it just had a readout. And it, it wasn't like an SDD 3000. It wasn't a 1000. It was maybe a two-something. But that was the first digital delay that I remember seeing because he went to Japan and came back with this thing. And I was like blown away with it because, you know, we were dealing with echoplexes, you know, yeah. shoved on the top of his rack had an echoplex. Uh -huh. But this was a precursor to the um, SDD, uh, SDE 3000. Right. Um, and the 1000 was a piece of shit. It had no headroom. Yeah. That yeah. thing was a joke. The 3000 was great, and it had Tap Tempo called Playmate on it. Remember that? That yeah, was really then, good. And then they went backwards in numbers to the 2500. Yes, that's right. Remember that? Yes. That, that was, was mid. Pretty good. But that, that's what this was similar to, the 2500. But it wasn't quite a 2500. I don't know. I'd have to dig up some photos, I guess. i got to find Kind of shit. The only then, then there was I remember. But so it was that that in um early on being in here in or there in, in LA in in studios, I got my hands on an, an H uh nine ten, you know, harmonizer. Yeah. But that was, you know, a, a studio piece, it was hundred percent wet. So I had to build a little interface, you know, to blend it in and, you know, to interface it to a guitar, you know. So I, I would have a, you know, a, a blend control and a level control. And um, that was pretty handy, you know, doing that kind of shit. Uh, so that and... I don't know what else. The the the, um, the MXR stuff. Remember the blue face thing? Yeah, you know, the like big the delay. Those, those good, actually. And, and the the pitch transposer. 
Now that was really cool. Knobs. You know? Now the thing I remember that you did that had the pitch transposer was Trevor Rabin. Yes. Uh huh. And Trevor Rabin. Trevor Rabin, and the only other guy was a guy named Jay Leach. Do you remember him? Jay Leach. Do you ever card his shit around? I know. I know that name. Yeah. He it might have been. He might have been with Royal though. I guess. He. I don't. Maybe he wasn't with Andy. Oh, he wasn't with Andy. With Royal. Yeah, MXR pitch transposer. That was cool. Yeah, then had the four knobs on the front, mm -hmm. and you touch a knob, and it would go to that setting, and the little light would light, and you go. Beep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. yeah. Those I, I cool. remember magazines when I was a kid of that rig of Trevor Ravens that you had done. Yeah, had Marshall D twelve in it. Yes. In it. And yep. uh, I don't remember what else. I think he had a boogie or something going on too, maybe. And yeah, and uh, other cord delay thingies. Yeah. Remember the ones that had the remotes that you could just shove in the front of them? <laughs> yeah, was that a cord? Yeah, it was a cord delay of some sort, reverb, multi effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, had yeah. a slot, and you just uh, you the remote. The, the remote the control remote of, <laughs> of a slot, and you could tweak the thing, and yeah. Fuck yeah! What was that called? <laughs> SD. It was a three thousand something, I think. Uh yeah. Never had one of those. I always thought that remote was stupid. <laughs> it was super dumb. Yeah, it was like ridiculous. And then, then there was there some was the other delay just below it. There was a, a, a single rack space. That had a sampler in it. That's the oh, and the sampling. We, we, we would sample dumb sayings and stuff into it, and yeah. oh, look at this, boop, you know, and mm -hmm. make it say dumb stuff back at you. That was fun. Yeah, and then then of course the famous the 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 SDD three thousand, the edge and the edge delay. Oh yeah, that's got the the preamp and uh, stuff yeah. in it that um, that people made. Just took the preamp section of it, yeah, and built it into a pedals. They like did actually. Sound. Okay, it's like taking an echoplex front end out, and mm -hmm. well, they've done that a lot too. I was gonna say a lot of yeah, pedals exactly. are in that too. Right. Everyone says that's the magic. That's the magic. I know it's not really. <laughs> no, I know. It's like really, you really think so? <laughs> I mean, it, okay. it sounds okay. It sounds cool, I guess, but uh, it can be a little wooly, yeah. actually. You know, here's over the years. Oh, and, and the, my, the other one that I love too is the Schaefer Vega thing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, the ones That's got that the are making that front end box, the so, so cumbersome, dumbass fucking box that you're supposed to like set on top of whatever you're using and plug into that. And now you've got the, you don't have the shitty radio, but you've, you're tethered to a fucking box that's got a dumb sound that we have to deal with. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy, any guy that brings that fucking thing into me, man, it's like, and I have to package this now. <laughs> I have to package this into your your rig somehow and take up space for a f oh god <laughs> <laughs> I don't know man this stuff yeah but then you charge him the money to do it so I guess it's okay well <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> uh, we got modern vintage Bob and Dave, what issues are common with the most popular rack gear used for rack rigs? Do you recommend fixing older rack gear or buying another one? Well, there's not a lot of new rack gear, that's for sure. There's not a lot of new rack gear. What's the issues are common? Common issues. The most common, common. Call it you mean like, what if, if like issues that happen to them, like how they break? Or what do you mean by that? 
Do you recommend fixing older rack? I think it might be in the interfacing. You know, maybe. If there's a great guy to fix stuff, then yeah, there are. I know a couple guys that are really great that fix old, you know, processors and things still. Boy, I wish I did. I don't know anybody anymore that. Well, there's a couple. You know, there's. Uh, there's yeah. Well, out there, you probably have somebody. You know. Well, there's, there's only a couple. Uh, I mean, there's only a couple that I know of. I mean, my one go-to guy that not so much for all the rack gear, but for the most weirdest shit is, uh, do you remember um, Rick Hamill that did the SIB pedals? No. Uh -uh, no. Remember SIB pedals? I know, the, I know that pedal, Sib. Yeah. yeah. So Rick Hamill's in San Diego, and uh, he's like a uh, – a echoplex expert so oh, okay so he can really if you if you have an echoplex and you really need it fine-tuned and dialed in the best it could possibly be he by far is the guy but he's also the guy like i'll send him the weirdest shit and he'll fix it <laughs> it's like well, hey, I got a he's got this yeah. weird world war ii nazi mic from a tank and he wants to use it in the studio. Can you fix this? Okay. And he'll fix right. it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because he That's loves the it. kind of guy you want on he your side. He loves that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So you know well, who's the guy who's the guy over um by third encore? Well there's Stretch who used to be uh you know at, at um Valley Sound that used to do, be the guy down at Westlake for years. And he does a lot. He can do a lot of high end repairs too. Like for I forget racket. the guy's name over there. There's a place on Van Owen, I think. Um, oh, you mean Ralph Skelton? No, it's not Ralph Skelton. No, this is something, another place. He, oh, and this guy used to do, um, uh, he used to do memory mods to Master Links. Um, yeah, he he's like a um, a uh, a, a service center for a lot of. Uh, of oh, I know stuff. the place you're talking about. It's on Van O, and it's I, I I don't even know if it's still there. It might be. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, and, anyway. and then, uh, but my partner in Friedman, he's got some guy too that works on old processors um, that he knows somewhere locally. That he's oh, Rob, his, yeah, Rob. He has Rob has a ton of old like rack gear, and so of course he's had to have a bunch of it worked on to make it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After a while, I, in fact, I got a couple D fifteen hundreds I need fixing. So, oh man, I mean, yeah, that stuff. I, have I just don't have the um, I don't have the patience to dig in as long as unless it's a a simple thing, you know, a real easy. Fix. Yeah, like a broken or a broken it. crack solder connection or something. Or yeah, I can find my way through that shit, but otherwise, nah. Yeah, I've got a Roland um, SRV two thousand. Is it broken? It's it's is something wrong with it. One of the inputs. SRV sounds great. Those were great, Tony. Yeah, definitely. I thought yeah, it's it, it when it works, it's good, but it's like intermittent and has a lot of noise. There's something going on with it. It might be something yeah. stupid. Like switch is dirty, or the the bypass switch is funky, or mm. or the jack. Yeah, especially when they're PC mounted and they get yeah. stressed out, and yeah, that's cracked on the jack. Yeah, and it's all, it's always great when you can fix those kind of things, um, and then you're a hero. But right. <laughs> Or sometimes they uh, sometimes sometimes they end up at the bottom of a pool though, which was the case with um, Landau in a tri stereo chorus one time. He, he threw he it. it into his pool in his backyard. <laughs> yeah, he was got fed up. <laughs> That'll happen. I remember a long time ago. It's a valuable lesson that uh, Stevie Fry a long time ago when he was still at Music Tech. Like this early, you know, early on. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I think Brower had given him a, 
Tristereo chorus to fix. It's like it, it's some intermittent problem. And he, and 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 he fixed it, but it was like, so what did you do? Well, I couldn't find it, so I just reflowed the whole entire board. <laughs> <laughs> Shotgun. And he goes and he goes, sometimes that's a lot faster than actually finding it. Right. Yeah. You know, just like exactly. It was it was a bad so connection on it somewhere. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Blanket approach occasionally is the uh yeah. the best fix. I get so, these guys, I get these guys that these repair techs that are call, calling me about repairing one of my amps. And I'm like, what what's what's going on? And I, I just go, it's a bad pot. I go, right. yeah, no, the pots read okay. I mean, it's like I go, I'm telling you, it's a bad pot. Just replace the pot. Right. I'll go. Yeah. This one guy, I remember, I went three weeks of, of on emails, and I go, just listen to me. Even do a blanket approach. Replace the the master pot and the treble pot and the bass pot. Three pots. This will take you <laughs> ten minutes to replace with right. pots that cost three dollars. Just do it. Oh, you're right. That was it. Yeah. Well, it's just so, so <laughs> I can, you know, yeah, climb out of your ass. Get your it's head something out of your simple. Ass. I know this amp. It, I know what you're saying, describing, and I know exactly what it is. Yeah. By the way, no, you can't buy good pots anymore. Period. So that's what I've learned. Really? Really? Not. Yeah. Come down to that. Man, we use full size. Well. Like you said, with your three plus, right? CTS all fucked up. You move to Holy this pot, crap, man. They get, you they then move to alpha. Shit. So we're using full size yeah. alphas for a million years, but all of a sudden they're fucking up left and right. So, hmm. um, I have bags of those fucking things, man. That that were out of tolerance, or oh, the CTS shitty caper, or just yeah. fucking man. Yeah. yeah, but we're in a kind of a dilemma. It's like, well, what the fuck do I switch to? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, how well, do you? Just... It, there's no choices. You just not any choices. Right. Yeah. And you know, at at some point in time, all the amps will start to be all PCB and PCB pots from Alpha that are actually good mm. because there's no right. other choice. Yeah. You buy PEC pots, but they're twenty dollars a pot. Twenty dollars a pot. Holy shit. Twenty dollars a pot. I can I can give you twenty dollars a pot, no problem. We can we can put it across your amp. Although your amp now it went up five hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who well, wants to pay that? Nobody. So, you know. You know, well, I, I, yeah. I, I, this is a dilemma these days. It's like you the the quality of, of the components you're getting is not quite what it used to be. You know, you hey, you have old Marshall amps and old Fender amps that have been around since the dawn of time, and guess what? They still have all the original pots in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're perfectly so fine. Fair. And what the fuck? It's you such know? a sad state of affairs. Everything's, you know, just... Well, it's just like an old car. versus Old car versus a new car. You know, old car has nice thick metal. Yep. Like, you know, it's like you close the door. It feels like, you know, you're, oh yeah, you know, closing a wall on the car. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's solid. It's good. It's easy. There's no computers. There's no nothing. It's simple. It works. It, it's better. <laughs> I got into a fender yeah. bender recently. The front of my car is all plastic. Every right. piece. It just crumpled like a. Yeah, it's no. unfucking believable. I couldn't like believe a, it. Like a baby carriage. Yep. If it were metal, it would not have crumbled like that. Not even because it was right. just a little fender bender. But because it's a fen you know, because it's all plastic, it all just crumbled. And yeah, so, I used yep. to have I used to have a uh, expedition that had you know the 
the original expedition that had the big truck bumpers on it, the metal, mm -hmm. the solid metal truck bumpers, the F-150 trunk bump, truck, uh, truck bumpers on it before they made them all yeah. fancy and new, nice. And there's a, a guy rear-ended me. And uh, his car was literally the whole front end was fucking in his lap. And and Mike, my, my, you look at the back of the expedition and it's like a dent in the fender. Mm. And you yeah. look at his car and it's like accordion. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. That, I'm like, yeah, that era was good. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't even that old. That was, you know, that was like a 2000 or something, you know. But it, yeah. but it has those big metal truck bumpers on <laughs> Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Um, we got a question from Sun Eboy76. Thanks, man. Uh, Bob, what is your most favorite bare bones must have for noodling rig? Limit it to as few pieces of gear as possible to get the most versatile amount of tones you can. Are we talking rack gear or just a rig? Hmm. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> a nice little fender amp, a tube screamer, and a delay of some sort. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. There you go. Or, or an overdrive of, of choice. I don't know, like a Blackstone, you know, or, um, God. And pick a delay. Pick your favorite delay, you know. That's true. That's true. Like, uh, okay, let's go Fender. I mean, that's my favorite, anyway. Let's go Fender Deluxe with uh, Overdrive Du Jour with a delay. Yeah. Bare yeah. bones, almost can do anything, depending on what overdrive you pick. I mean, it might not do metal sure. tones or, you know. Uh, and also, it depends on how loud you can play the Deluxe. Better if you play it a little louder. Well, see, mm -hmm. if you've got that pedal, that, that means you've got a, another stage to go to to keep things yeah. interesting. You don't have to turn it on. You leave it off. but And then you've got an echo for, um, you know, for um, ambience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not reverb, echo. Yeah. Give me an echo. <laughs> yeah. I, I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always like you a know. little delay. Right, Which helps fill out fill out the sound a little bit. Yeah, yeah like for there's instance, so many to yeah. choose from, and they're all pretty damn good, actually. They're not, you know. Sure, we can get into, um, uh, you know, subtleties of whatever euphonicness of various ones, but you know, you can get away with it with a fucking DD three, man. Yeah, um, or um. You know, you name it, a, 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 a boss analog echo for that matter, one of those red ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they work great. Yep. Buy yourself a Keeley Halo. That's a great pedal. Oh, that's a great pedal. Yeah, that's one too. Yeah. yeah. That's a new, newer one, but it, it's a cool one. Sounds good. Here's yep. a here's a fun one. My favorite is the Moore Reecho. Moore Reecho. Call it Reecho. Really? Moore. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little white pedal. It's a little white delay pedal, and they it's fucking vibe for days. They just sound great. Oh, now you got their setting. Pick one. You know, doesn't matter. I never saw that before. Really? Well, there's no. the tip. There you go. Check that out. Look at yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Before, um, the, before your buddies go and get the prices go up. On reverb. Right. Oh, right. Okay. 88 you bucks. Have no Galaxy analog, <laughs> stereo in, stereo out, low cut, high cut, dry. Oh, yeah. Look at this shit. Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait. No, but, 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 wait. No, this Re is the Pro. Thing. No, not the Pro. Not the Pro. That's no good. No, the white one. The white mini pedal. Oh, the white is mini. Is the Pro yeah. set? I don't know about the Pro. All I know is the mini pedal. There's one on reverb right the now for $44.99. For Say, oh, fuck. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Get it now before it goes Jump up. Jump on it. Jump yep. on it. 
That's uh, funny. Re echo. Uh, I love that little turd, man. It's great. There it is. Let's see. That's it. Pro. Re That's it. Rico. Wait, wait, I gotta see. Rico Suave. Rico Suave. <laughs> oh, that little tiny thing. Yeah, yep. man. Well, I'm now. Yep. Now I'm also curious about the pro. Check that fucker out, man. That's a good. Have one. you seen the pro one though? No, there's too many knobs. Okay, yeah, okay, I understand. There's too much stuff. I agree. <laughs> I so agree. Funny. I, like, say, I don't you? want all it's that like, other crap. The, the answer is the answer is these days. It's like, aren't you tired of fucking around? <laughs> I know, man. Yes. It's like with all the modelers. Aren't you tired of fucking around? Oh right. God! I had to. I just. I just finished this rig for my my buddy, my pal, um, Scott Holiday with Rival Sons, and I love this guy. He's a sweetheart. He's a fucking cool guy. He's into his gear, and. I had to um, integrate. Um, he wanted to go full on helix, <laughs> and he's using the the line six helix. And I'm a blind six guy. I love their stuff's great. I mean, I I like their stuff. I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. My favorite's the M5, a little box that they make. That is um, a uh, Swiss Army knife of effects. Oops! That I think is uh, uh, a bargain at, at any price. They're Which so one good. is this? That's the um, M5, the Line Six M5. Oh, okay. It's what you see is is what you see is what you get. It's um, one effect. At a time, but there's a hundred of them in there. But it could be a echo one second, and the next minute it could be a, uh, a uh, octave, whatever, uh, a, a whatever, man. Yeah, a, an envelope filter for Christ's sakes, you know. Mm. And then the next one is a reverb, you know. And the next one, it's a wah, and it's a fucking convincing wah too. Oh, and and really? you hook it up to an expression pedal, and you walk a walk out of that thing, it fucking sounds amazing. Hmm. And you go to a uh, a, a whammy thing, and broop, 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 you know, it's a whammy, and it's yeah. a fucking convincing whammy. It's really good. Go to the green setting, and it's a fucking tube screamer that I I think. You, if you didn't know better, you would be hard pressed to tell that it was you know, any oh, the kind M5, of a cool Swiss Army knife for sure. Oh, amazing! You know they make an M9. It's too many things for me. There, that motherfucker right there. Yep. When they stop making those, look, look at the price at that. That's insane. Hmm. This is a fucking motherfucking secret weapon, people. That wow. You'd be hard pressed to uh, uh, tell that you know it's not doing the real thing. Yeah, you know, I'm telling you, it, you know, it's all a feel thing. We all know that, you know. But the kids ain't gonna fucking know. I'm telling you, you could fool a lot of people with that box. I would totally agree. That that, that thing is actually really cool. Huh. Unbelievable. Of, really and, then, and they make an M13 with fucking 13 of them in it or something. It's like, ah, ah, no, no. That one, one at a time. Yeah. Okay. And I don't even know how I got on this subject. How, how, what brought me to that? You're talking about the rival sons. Yes, 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 yes. Because he's um, all helix. He wants. You know, he wants the minute. helix. He's all helix. He's gone helix. There's no amps. Yes. Well, there's actually um, 
No, not really. Well, there, there's a power amp. There's a Mesa power amp, a 50 watt per channel power amp, driving his speakers. Okay. No, I want their speakers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's, well, like he's Steph, dominated like it up Steph with Carpenter a fucking too. tube amp. What's that? It's like Steph Carpenter kind of. He's using like the Helix and the and the and the power amp kind of thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this guy's gone. Uh, uh, Scott's gone balls deep into this. In that, um, I had to to tear down his whole rig, um, build it out so that his massive pedal board that he had is now split into two separate pedal boards that fit into Pelican cases. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be portable. So yeah. it's become this portable rig and it's a, a, a helix floor that he needed to have be the controller because it, the way the snapshots work, they, they change for each snapshot. They can be, um, anything you want it to be it's, it's very open-ended and oh, okay whatever but he still has to have my system to control all his analog pedals because it, that thing doesn't have a ton of loops in it mm -hmm. it's actually got six instances it's and it's got four four effects loops we use two for each of his boards. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, um, I had to delve into this fucking thing, kicking and screaming to try to implement all that it does to control his rig. And we worked it out. It worked out great. It turned out pretty cool. And it's interesting the way it works. Um, it's uh, still, you know, um, there's no, the only tube amp is a tube power amp anymore, pushing speakers. So he's using the Helix for his tone. Like, okay, that's fine. Whatever. I mean, it's a modern world out there. Whatever it's you got to do. Got a band. <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. Um, but you know what? I've always said. It's not my rig. It's your rig. Yeah. If you like the way it sounds with these. Do These are all a means to an end. You know, if they work for you, go for mm -hmm. them. Oh, yep. I'm not going to be, you know, Mr. Oh, you kind of go through tubes. You have to, you know. I'm not that. I've never been that way. I, I'm no, I, for whatever works for you. I understand. Now, you ask me what I uh, would rather hear. I'll tell you. It's you know, it's a fucking big blazing tube amp for sure. But I get that you have to go a different way and. You have to work as a uh, modern touring musician that needs to, everything has to fit into cases that weigh less than 50 pounds each. And okay, then that's what you have to do. Wow. Um, I know what I like. You know. Well, we all know what we that like. Be, so when the aesthetic of a band like that, which is a retro style rock band, yeah, is using a helix, it just makes me want to go run the other direction. He could probably get a good sound. It's fine. I'm sure it's good. You know. Yeah. But, See, the kids don't know I've any been on bills, But I've been on bills. You know, with bands where they're multi band deal, and the bands that 
use real amps and then there's bands that use the modelers and i'm telling you out front when you're watching it there is definitely an impact difference yeah it, it is there's a fucking difference mm -hmm. and I, and you know uh i i always bring i always bring it up um I'm uh, my buddies from Detroit. This band Sponge that was from the '90s, you know. And they right. they always come and tour. And they always use real amps, man. And you see them on a bill with a few other bands, and then the other ones are using Kempers or they're using something else. And you know, their band has to use cabinets live. They have to use real amps because so much of their shit is based on like feedback from the amp and everything, right? Sure. And, well, yeah, yeah. And and, and and like, yeah. and that is that. That's the. If you didn't have that, and you didn't have that interaction, it just wouldn't be their band. And, but but you hear it right up against these other bands with seemingly relatively decent sounding guitars, but the impact is not there. You mm -hmm. don't have the punch and the impact. That the 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 real amp band has, and I'm not talking. They're not playing ridiculously. Well, would you louder. know that walking in cold to, from the back of an arena? Would you know that walking in cold? Are you is your ear that attuned to know these things? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. I don't know. Well, I, I got I got to say I got to say that um, I'll notice the differences between the bands. And the impact that they are having, uh, would I know which one is using what? Maybe you know it's potentially possible that you could be fooled if they really yeah. did a good job of it. But eh, eh. there's something about a little stage volume coming off the stage. There's something cabinet list on stage. It's just, uh, it's a yeah. So it, it for a rock and roll band, okay. I'm not saying that this isn't. I, you know, I understand why people do it, but I I don't buy into this whole thing about sound guy. You know, sound guys are always like, well, yeah, I want a quiet stage and I want this and that. And I go, you know, no one had a problem mixing Led Zeppelin years ago. No one had a problem. Yeah, I know. All these right. bands years ago, I've seen raging fucking. Landau, back when I used to tech for Mike and stuff, you know, with 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 raging hockeys and all that shit, they played fucking louder than shit. And guess what? Right. That always sounded good out front. In fact, right. I remember them playing at the whiskey, and I remember there was this sound guy Louie, and which later would travel with them a little bit and do some gigs with them because they really liked him. He goes, "It's the easiest that guy. in the world, man. All their sounds." We're great. All you had to do was right. turn the fingers up, and it was all there. Mm -hmm. He goes, "Yeah, well, it was yeah. I mean, but, but that, that, but that's good. him. I mean, that's that's <laughs> Louis was lucky. Louis was good. He, he was a good rock mixer, though, because like, he handed it to him. They they handed it to him. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah. But these days, the band can hand them hand the sound guy something, and they'll still fuck it up. Jesus well, that's Christ. true. That today are horrible. Especially if it's called wet, dry, wet. Oh my god! Three they channels. Don't oh they don't understand that. Oh, no. <laughs> what do I do? Here's, here's what you do. Here's what you do, man. You put three mics, and you put no EQ on anything, no nothing, and, and you, you put them all at the same level, yeah, just, and just leave and it there, and bring up the center one, and just leave it. Don't worry about the the left and right. Just yeah. <laughs> uh, um, this is an old man rant, is what this is. <laughs> yeah, I know pretty man. much, right? Wow. Gee, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a question. Uh, from... Now get off my lawn. <laughs> right, get off my lawn. Super chicks. What's the greatest up? movie ever? What's the best way to use a single foot switch to channel switch for two amps? I want to save space on my board and avoid confusion when switching between channels on my T my uh, twin sister and small box combos. Well, you can do that, but you can't. But you need 
um, circuitry inside that foot switch to do it successfully. It can be one foot switch. Light off is one setting. Light on is another. It can be. And it can be if you modify. It can it. be, but but you've got things you there's so you stuff you got to do behind that switch that one switch that has to do all that you know you might be able to get away uh with doing an archaic y cable and lifting the ground on one of the switches you'd at least avoid the ground loop but it'll probably still switch it maybe or you just have somebody or I could modify the foot switch um, for you, AD. and you can, I could modify the foot switch, put yeah. your tracks on it. That one is isolated from the other, and you're all good. Yeah, it's not as easy as just. So it's not like you can go out and buy it. Three jacks? N well, no, not necessarily. Really? Maybe you can. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head, though. Mm hmm. Interesting. Okay. Email uh, me. I can I can hook you up with something. Yeah. Uh, Taylor three fifteen. Great show tonight, guys. Thank you. Uh, in Bob's opinion, in all the guitarists that he's worked with, who's had the best sounding rig? Oh, rig or best sounding fingers? <laughs> oh, um, best, uh, both. Yeah, both. Oh, Together. gee. I could say who my favorite is. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's Mike. You know, that's. Oh, Lando. Uh, yeah. That's an easy answer, but you know, it's true. Um, I don't know. He's pretty strong. Have you heard a guy named Jim Oblon? No. Who's that? You know, he's a he's a blues guy. He's a telly wrangler. He fucking is amazing. I think he's great. Um, he's from East Coast, moved to to LA recently. He is a drummer too. And he I saw him play drums with Paul Simon. This guy okay. played drums, and then he fucking picked up a fucking Telecaster during a tune uh, up on Paul Simon's show and fucking ripped a fucking burning-ass solo from behind his kit. Mm. And this guy is a young guy. He's fucking fantastic. He's really good. Plays his ass off. Look him up, Jim Oblon. Hmm. He's done. He's got a new record that just came out—a blues record that he just did. And you know, it's like, you know, it's a cat that, you know, is, you know, self. You know, he's doing it all himself. You know, and hmm. making his records, and um, uses great players. Um, this this record that he just did is uh, uses Jim Keltner, plays with Keltner, and um, he plays with uh, Larry Goldings, um, keyboards he's played with, and he's played with various guys. I don't know. He's here. He is that he, guy, have, man. Yeah, True Fire. He, they, they fucking, have... Dude's a fucking badass, man. He's hmm. super good. I'll have to check, check him, him out. out. Yeah, oh, man. Cool. He's the shit. Really good. Don't know him. I met him at at at, at, a, uh, at a Nashville Nam show one time. I'm um, I saw him walking in the door when I was sitting there fucking eating a bagel, and I yelled out to him because I recognized him and introduced myself to him. Anyway, um, that's cool. That that's the only way I know him. I know him as a fan. You know, just super good. 
like them a lot. Anyway, where was I? What, who, who were we talking about? Oh, I actually wanted to talk about real quick um, our sponsors for the show since we didn't bring this up earlier. Uh, make you sure know this we, guy. You know Tim. Tim. Tim from, oh, I love him. Timmy. Tim from Chapman, baby. He's the fucking best, man. Tim's a good guy. Been so good to me, man. He's a great guy. Yeah, hey, look, he's... man. He got look, Mark. The little interface box is up. Oh yeah, that's the the junk box. Junk he's box. He's been doing my metal work for years, years and years. Yeah, he got the little junk boxes up, guys. Right on. Just little screw boxes that he made for people, you know. And what what is yep. it exactly does this do for people so they know they know? Man, it's just a jack to a jack, man. Okay. <laughs> right it's, a, it's a through, it's a through box. It's a patch bay, man. That's you it. got it, Jack. <laughs> right, you got it, Jack. <laughs> That's it, man. But it's in a it, it's in a bunch of varieties, though. You know, so you got. A little four banger that's kind of stacked. You got a four banger that's kind of sideways, and mm -hmm. uh, nice. you got a six thing, and this and a huge one that's six and six stacked. You know, nice, yeah. for the people who have five thousand nice. connections off their pedal board, but you know that those are cool. Those are just passive, you know, jack to jack kind of nice circuit board yep. things. Patch boxes, yeah, 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 yeah. Just patch boxes. Just accessories. He's just doing the accessories for the pedal boards and stuff, you know, the, the little hinge lifts and things like Probably that. Probably the best um, sliding tray out there now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got him to make that because <laughs> no one made it. Yeah. You know, yeah, when, right, uh, rack, the, the, this, the rack drawer rack, right uh, here. Rack man went away. Yeah. Yeah, rack man went away. And then for a while, I had him make some. Uh, just custom for me, you know, that were just yeah. aluminum and they're not steel. So they're kind of lighter. So that's nice, you know, and then just like put it in your store, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, right. It looks like it's heavy yeah. duty. Nice stuff. Well, it's, yeah, but it's, it's good. light. It's not, you know, the old, the old rack man ones were steel and, it, you know, it's, it's heavy. fucking heavier. It's just more shit to. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. It's hard to find a good tray anymore that, that doesn't explode when it goes yeah. out of your shop. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. also, guys, check out Sweetwater. They're another sponsor of the show. Uh, check out our link below if you're going to purchase anything. We get a, a little, as an affiliate, we get a little kickback from them. And they give um, you candy, so, you know. Candy. Uh, they give you a, uh, you know, a uh, a sticker as well. Yeah. Uh, no, they're I great. love Sweetwater. I got a guy at Sweetwater now. It's just like I, um, well, because we're a vendor too, like you get a little, yeah, you know, get a little extra thing from them. And, uh, but, you know, like if I need some, you know, if people need stuff, you got to buy it for the rig or something that you're making, you know, it's, it's like, yeah. I'll just go there and I, I literally email my guy. I go, I just, Throw throw like five part numbers at him. It's just like charge my card. <laughs> and about I've got, about I've got my guy. Later, yeah, I got a guy. Ben Robinson's my guy. Yeah. You know, I got a guy named Ben. I go Ben, hook me up. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we hey, got a, a we got a question in the chat from Santa Cruz thirty six hundred. He says, "Hey Bob, this may sound odd, but any chance of an old school RS ten?" available again or updated rs10 i just like the size dimensions of that box rather than a long rectangle mm, well can't please everybody i guess <laughs> um i do yeah. there, there is some simplicity about the original that i love damn yeah i swear <laughs> um no i'm not gonna do that that configuration anymore you just got to find one you know I do them yeah. the long way because this because everything's PC board mounted. You know, I can't, I can't, um, you know, pivot that easy mm -hmm. and try to do different size things. Anyway, yeah. Uh, 
Roger Dat, thank you. Bob, are the components you use for the fidelity magic in your interfaces, amp switchers, stereo line mixers, et cetera, still available? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like relays? I'm still doing the same stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> relays are available. Yeah. Off amps are available. And I've got a I've got um a crazy sonic upgrade these days for um, um, if you really want a crazy um, uh, audiophile style um, active electronic circuit in there, mm. you know, um, that I've done for, um, well, I've done it for just one other client that, who, um, I consider to be uh, probably my, well, I, I should say this. He, he's just a really good client. He's just great. And um, he appreciates what I do for him. And um, I go to the wall for him because um, he's a great guy and um, he's a hell of a player. And um, uh, I've, done some stuff here that I think is sounds amazing and I've utilized this circuit and such um, in my um, in my hi-fi rig at home <laughs> because I I build a uh, source selector system and a line driver thing for my home stereo which um, occupies a lot of my interest these days and um, um, it's so transparent and and just beautiful sounding, and um, it's just just something I can do now. You know, works out good. So, oh, no, cool. Curious. Cool. Um, yeah, it's um, you know, I'm I'm you know, I'm not, you know, it's just a um, a discrete op amp you know basically and um it sounds fucking amazing and like i said i'm using it in in my um home stereo and i've used it in my home stereo you know for the past year or so and it's so sonically transparent it's like i'm like blown away by it it's just amazing really good oh, cool. so yeah it's cool That's awesome Love that. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, yep. you got me interested. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Super Chicks, thank you. Thanks for your help, Dave. We'll email you. Bob, I love your stuff, especially the CAE wall. Thanks for doing the oh, show, thanks, show guys. We all appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thanks, oh, man. Nice. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. CAE wall is good. Yep. I'll. I'll I'll attest to that, that fucker still is still work is still uh it's still kicking away there man it was dunlop yeah, with very two different doctors and shit and i'm cool. happy about that man i mean it's been going strong and i'm glad the people like it and it's looks cool and sounds oh, great it's still, and it's still selling the line drivers and stuff too right absolutely yeah man they're still chugging away you know yeah um yeah, I'd like to do some different things with them. It's just slow going, I guess. I don't know. You know, would do. What do you want to do? Like a, a pedal board interface, really. Just yeah. some uh, sort of, you know, I.O. type thing that I've done a million times. Mm -hmm. But would like to see a uh, an actual, um, you know, interface type product i think it would be a cool thing you know yeah i mean yeah. any pedal board could use it whether it's big or small you know sure. get in and out mm -hmm. there's people doing it these days you know it's like boy this is it's like you can't come up with fucking original shit anymore without you know looking over your shoulder going who's gonna come up with this next mm -hmm. and you know um that happened to me fairly recently. Um, I had a, 
a, a little gizmo that I was working on with my uh, my engineer Bob Walker, who has since passed away. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it was just brutal and excruciating when he left this planet. Man, it was like, yeah, man. I, I would talk to Bob every once in a while, yeah, and, and like yeah. in latter times before he yeah, died. Yeah, you know, he did stuff for Stevie too. You know, he he worked for yeah. with me for years. Yeah, you know, me and him. And then he went to work with John. Yeah, and he worked with John for a while, but he was my mentor, man. He was like a fucking he. God, I mean, I knew him before. You know, when when we both worked at Quad Eight, and before I even got into this game, like I am now, you know, and um, yeah, he was whoa, yeah. Mm. Sorry Fuck. to hear that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it see, it seems everyone. Yeah, so I had a gizmo that we were about to come out with. We were right, you know, it, it was like about to happen. And I thought, oh, this is cool, man. I've never seen anything like this out there. This is like, oh, the, I pride myself in that, you guys. I, 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 I don't copy anybody. I don't like. I'm a fucking hermit, and when it comes to covering my head and, and just doing my thing, and um, I don't, I don't, uh, I. I pride myself in that. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we're on the verge of this thing about to come out. We were right down to, okay, uh, from Bob's end, get me some money so that I can finish the code and, and work, you know, this thing out. And I went, okay, I'll do what I can. And I was like, it was like, I think I had moved. I had moved here and I was still trying to get myself together out here. And, you know, and I ended up um, going, okay, I got to sell this piece of gear in order to get Bob some money <laughs> yeah. um, to, to, to uh, finish this code so we can get this little gizmo out. Right. And, um, I'm hearing from him sporadically because I hadn't heard from him for a while. And, and um, he tells me, yeah, I need blah, blah, blah in order to finish the code and everything. I was like, okay, I'll do that. So, so I ended up selling this piece of gear, this, this thing that I cherished. I love this thing, this fucking thing. Anyway, sold it and got the money and sent it to him. And a couple of weeks later, I get a message from John, sir, saying, you know, Bob uh, passed away peacefully with his family surrounding him. And, you know, thought you'd want to know. And boom. Like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, you know, that's a bummer. You just move on, yeah. It's, and it's, and it's, yeah, it's sad. The money, I don't give a fuck about the money. I care about my friend who right. left me. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Sorry to hear, man. Yeah. Yeah, um, it sucks. Yeah, John DeShane says uh, a Bradshaw loop switcher would be cool. I agree. Oh, well, thanks. It makes them custom. It would. It would be cool. Well, here's um here's a question. So he makes them custom. Uh, Paul Cooper asks. I missed this in the beginning, but is Bob still working with the general public for rig building? I hear he went yeah. to pedals and moved from racks. Does he still work with racks and pedals and racks? Yep. I think he does it all. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not going to answer. Think so I would say, yeah. I mean, I don't care. What if you want a rig done, contact thing. So how would people you know, reach out funny. to you? 
Yeah, I mean, please. You know, that's the way. What's the contact for them? That's the way it works. Bob at customaudioelectronics.com. There you go. Just people email me, up. man. And, and that's the up, way it man. works. You, you get you don't get anybody else, you get me. You contact Bob at customaudioelectronics.com, you get me. So, you know, that's no. that's what I say when um when when people are when you're emailing Friedman customer service, you guess what? That's me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so you, hope, you got to I hope you catch me in a good mood. Dave. <laughs> I hope you catch me in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I just put your contact information in the description of the video so anybody who wants to reach cool, out to that's Bob. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah. I mean, I I'm open to anybody. I don't care. You know, um I, I just have to be available to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it takes a minute, and um, you know, that's he's a one man. I'm one, I'm one guy. I'm one guy, and that's you know. He'll, he'll get back to you. you know, I'm there for everybody I can, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. Dave, any uh, any chance we can see some new Friedman guitar models in 2023? New models, not new models, but um, making more guitars in 2023. Sure. Okay. It's been a slow process. The whole the whole like Grover moving pandemic combo mm -hmm. thing uh, really like ground things to a halt. Um, so, um, but yes. Dave, do you still have that, uh, RS 10 still? No, that got sold last show. Uh, okay. Um, by the way, everyone that, that was on the last show, thank you for all the purchases. That was a cr credible, good show. Yeah. Oh, you uh, uh, unloaded a bunch of gear, right? Yeah, it was it well, it was a gear sale show, but yet somehow people still want decided they wanted to complain about the gear, gear sale show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They fucking <laughs> complaining about first of all, we advertise it as a gear sale show. This is right, not a right. high content interesting chat show. This is right. We're looking to move We're just selling here. gear here, fellas. I have this shit for sale. This is cool. This is a good one. Want to buy this? That's all it was, man. That's all it was. And and to be honest, it worked great. <laughs> yeah, we always did, did. You unload a lot of your shit, dude. Are you fucking kidding? Everything I put up except four items, and I must have put up fifty items sold. What didn't sell? I have two Ricochet pedals, Digitech Ricochet pedals, which are awesome. And they both had commitments to buy, but both of the guys backed out, man. I emailed them five times, and they're like, didn't pay. Mm. And then wow. uh, I think I had a fucking pussies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a, 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 a over overtone pedal and a fucking flashback delay or something little tiny one yeah well they're yeah. shit so cheap man, stuff yeah well we're gonna but do then, another one i had a couple other things but then i put it up on my facebook just recently the like five other items i had still dude and, and you sold these things and, and there's no fucking reverb commission right yep no reverb commission and yeah we do the uh yeah we do the little friends and family or the the zell right. or you know something so it's like you know right yeah oh, and it, it you know it worked well i got a yeah. fucking shit on other shit you know why because i'd like to move out of california yeah i hear you bro and and believe me and i have a goal and i have so much crap that i don't use and it's just like what yeah. why, why do i have it yeah 
I, I and gave I have shit away when I moved, man. I fucking, uh, I said, everybody, um, I, I did a Facebook thing and said, you know, come over. I'm moving. Help me move and you might fucking win a fucking shitty amp or something. <laughs> and a bunch of people showed up, you know. And yeah, man, you're, move. you're wow. in a, you're, you're in a nice place now, man. It's a, ah, it's I like it here, man. I'm super happy here. And no, I'm not fucking lonely and worried about fucking, you know, anything. I'm cool. Mm. Everything is fine here. You... <laughs> well, if, if, you said if, something if, to Luca. You, what did you say to Luca there about, yeah, I think he's, he, he, we talked a long time the last time he was on. I think he's like, well, no, 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 no. I said what, what I said. What did you say? I said you, 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 you talked a lot the last yeah. show we did. We, we, you went on. You really, you really fucking brought content. That was good. That was great. Right, right, uh, but, right. but it was like you couldn't get in a word right there or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I was just I'm, I'm lonely I, with the Amish or something. I was you know? I was just joking. I was like going, nah. maybe he's a little lonely because he boy man, he really talked a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I'm and like, he's funny, he goes, What do you he's funny, he goes, What do you say about me? I was like <laughs> I'm not, I would never fucking No. <laughs> I'm not gonna bash that guy, man. I fucking love oh, him. Man, looks great, man. Looks the best. Looks so I so see. Good. I see. You're basically a secret watcher of Tone Talk. Yeah. No, I I watch. You know things that are, you know, that you want to see. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. For sure. You want to see the episode? You watch the Jakey Lee episode? Watch, watch us get fucking shit faced. No, I haven't watched that one yet. I've got to watch that one. That's the next. Oh, that is a watch. funny episode. Yeah, it's really good for That's a while, sad, and then sad. it really starts to go. Holy shit! You yeah. know, it even yeah. got uglier when we left the show. Oh my god! Hey, Dave. We, went, we went to dinner at fucking like eleven o'clock at night in Vegas. Did you sell the Jose? No, I didn't sell that. All right, so that's the one thing that didn't sell. Yeah, I'm holding out for a lot of money on that one. So so was he so was he at face to face with you? On yeah. So on the on the Jake show? show, we were yeah. So so we did a Jake a, a Friedman Jake model. We became friends uh -huh. because uh, he was doing a Red Dragon Cartel tour, and I right. sent him an amplifier because he was good friends with Mike Tempesta, who works at Fender with Charvel. Right. Yeah. And Mike's like, you got to hear one of Dave's amps. And at the last second, we sent it to him. It was supposed to get there on a Friday. They were leaving on a Monday. And it got delayed in shipment, or the fucking guy at the shop didn't get it out on time. So it didn't get there right. till Monday with the day they were leaving. And I'm like, what the fuck? Mm, right. And um, he got it and got one rehearsal in with it. And he's like, that's it. I'm taking it. Went off on tour okay. with it. We established a relationship then, and I did. I right. mean, I had met him once you before. trying to hunt him down to get the amp back, and him. No, 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 not at, at all, all. costs. <laughs> uh, not at all. Okay. And uh, we became friends, Just and then saying. I'm like, "How about we do a model? How about we do a limited edition model or something?" You know, and you know, he yeah. wanted certain things, and I did it, and he was happy. He made a bunch of money. Was he articulate with what he wanted? Yes, well, he good. was. Okay. He was articulate yeah. with what he wanted. He he runs everything on ten, right? I mean, like everything. On 10. Mm. So right. really, the average user is never going to run it like he actually physically runs it, right? But um, yeah. He so he was real happy. We became really good friends over over the last course of. The last, I don't know how many years, oh. uh, six years or seven years or something now. Oh. And uh, right. so every time I go to Vegas, I look him up and whatever. So we do a tone, we, we do a tone talk. I'm in Vegas. I, I went to Vegas and to do it. And actually, we did it right. in our, my hotel room. And, uh, and of course, he was late. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it started late and you know, I was downstairs in the in the bar having a couple beers beforehand because I was waiting for sure. her. And right. uh, you know, then you go up, you know, bought a few things at the little store, went upstairs. There's a bottle of scotch there waiting for him because he likes scotch. Well, and right. gin and tequila. Well, <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, we proceed to drink the bottle of gin, uh, the bottle of scotch on air. It's a four hour show. Right. We, we, we drink the bottle of scotch. We drink uh, a few beers that were in the room. We drink. <laughs> We took everything that was around us. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, but by, by, by the end of the episode, I'm repeating my questions to him. Right. Right. You know, <laughs> you, you know it's well. Slurring. Slurring the words. It. We're hammered by the end of the show. And, uh, right. and then we proceed to go to dinner. He knows a place to go. Luckily, my friend in, in the episode, you see a friend of mine that had comes in the room at some point in time. He's sitting on the bed behind us. He's just watching his old friend of mine who's sober. So I'm like, here's the keys, man. You're driving. You're right. going to dinner right. with us. OK. And um, we go to this place called the Cleaver. It's a steakhouse mm -hmm. in Vegas. Right. Uh, and it's a good steakhouse. It's good. Jake, Jake knew it. He said, they're open late. Let's go. All right, fine, great. We go. By this point, you're like, you're trying to read the menu. Uh, uh. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the, the waiter is like, what would you like to drink? And I just said, whatever he's having. Well, that was an absinthe cocktail. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, and well, and over the course of the dinner, there might have been two maybe three of those oh right right that was on top of oh, the bottle of that we both drank and and some beers before that so it wasn't a good night let's just put you, it that you way. shaved some some years off i took a couple years off my life that night but um <laughs> it was worth it i hope to do another show with him he wants to do another show actually yeah we got to do it well, what he wants to do is he wants to do a show live with Warren D. Martini because that's his old buddy. Mm. And, yeah. that, that and I've be become up. friends with Warren over the years, too. And that's Jake wants to do it, but I'm just trying to convince Warren to do it is the, is the issue. Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah, yeah, he's very quiet about his life. And it's like, come on, we'll just have some drinks and we'll just have fun. Jake, right. on the other hand, doesn't care what he says at all. Right. Which makes for a fun show. He has no filter. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, that, that makes for the great show. Right. So. Right. <laughs> he, he was no one wants to watch us be filtered. They want to watch us, you know. Let it all out. Yeah, Let right. Out. Cut loose a little bit. Cut, cut loose a little bit. Say say what you feel. and I mean, right. obviously, you got to be somewhat careful, but. Yeah, I mean, and we, well, yeah, we, if you're a public figure, <laughs> and we assure, we assure, already assured Warren that we would not go into any of the stuff, right? You know, any of the band stuff. We just want to talk about guitar playing and tone and gear and stuff like that. So it right. doesn't have to doesn't have to get into the, any of the ugly You've stuff. You've done stuff with Warren over the years. Warren's a sweetheart. Oh yeah, he's great. He's super cool. Nice guy, man. Yeah. Super cool guy. I hung out with him and Luke up at Lukey's um, uh, hot tub, you know, up at his house. Oh, yeah? A couple of times, yeah. <laughs> I've got a good... <laughs> Uh-oh. I got a good... Uh, um, who, who is the other guy? Uh, Robin Crosby. Oh, yeah. Robin, yeah. Right? Remember Robin? Yeah. yeah the late Robin Crosby. Who is this, uh, my, my rat story? Um, I bought a, um, a 66, uh, uh, Mustang GT coupe from Robin Crosby mm -hmm. and, um, he wanted 5,200 bucks for it. $5,200. I'm like, okay, no problem. So I bought this car and I went up to his house in Laurel Canyon to pay him for it 
and um, I knock on the door, and he comes to the door. The big, you know, he's a big dude. Remember him? Mm -hmm. He's a big, big blonde doofus. And I go, hey, man, I'm buying the car. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. You got the money? Yeah, I got the money. Here, here. Um, it's 5200 bucks. Here's $5,200 bills. So we count it out. And he's sitting there looking at me like, $5,200. I thought it was $5,200. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, $5,200. Right, $5,200. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, wow. Okay, here, man. Here's, here's the money. Here, man, you know, count it. Yeah. $5,200 bills, bro. $5,200. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Thank you very much. How was the car? Wow. Car is fucking awesome. It was very yeah, it was cool. cool. Yeah. What cool. year was that? 66 GT Coupe. Yeah, but what year did you buy it? What year did I buy it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I had it in the 80s. I had three Mustangs at one time. I had a 66 GT Coupe um, and a 69 Mach 1 mm. and a 80 or 90, some, the last year of this particular body style before they went back to the retro thing. Was like, mm -hmm. I was a Mustang nut for a while. You know, I love the Mach 1. <laughs> Yes. Oh, oh my God. So great. You don't so see many great. of those. 69. Such yes. a great year. With a sports roof. Yeah. Not, they, 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 sports roof, not not a fastback. It's called a sports right. roof. A buddy of mine is going to a car show tomorrow, and I was debating going just to go check out some cars. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> sure is. God. And I wish I had money to buy them all. Um, yep. My my, my all-time fave, if I had to buy an old car, would be a, uh, you know, a suicide door Lincoln. Mm. Black. Oh, my, my stepdad had one of those. We had one Fuck of those for, for years, man. They were so fucking cool. Mm. We, we took that car. My my stepdad was a crazy motherfucker, man. He was a, a t optometrist, but um, he uh, l loved uh, being out in the woods in the country. He was from Arkansas, but he was a Czechoslovakian immigrant mm -hmm. who grew up in a fucking uh, a boxcar. Um, where was I going with this, man? But he, he had, we had... Lincoln Continentals with the suicide doors, man. And yeah, would, man. That was a cool. drive, drive those fuckers out to the woods. He used to, um, he was a gentleman farmer. He had cows. We had cattle. We had horses. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we would drive out to the, out to the ranch in that fucking uh, uh, Lincoln with the suicide doors. I remember we took it. Remember, you ever heard of the twelve hours of Sebring? Yeah, Sebring sure. is a um, it's a it's a uh, road race. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. We used to go there every year. Sebring is in Florida, is the central Florida, mm -hmm. and we would go there, and it was on a five point two mile course and an abandoned uh, military uh, um, uh, 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 airport, and. Um, 5.2 mile course and you, you would go there and you would park on the infield and it was like a, a party every fucking year and and you would go there and we would go there and camp out my dad would drive this fucking Lincoln Continental and I have pictures to this day of us 
all like fucking, we look like fucking hillbillies, man. My mom with her fucking beehive hairdo and shit. And I was like a skinny little rat, and, and like maybe 15 years old or something. And with the doors open, the suicide doors blowing open, you know, we're like camping out, you know, on the infield of this, uh, this uh, airport. For the twelve hours of Sebring, it's a great mm. race. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My favorite car is a '57 Chevy. They're oh man, they're great. Uh, I love them. Great too, man. Yep, uh, love them. Yeah, I just there's something I like about that jet black suicide door. Mm -hmm. That is my thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Almost like a I don't know if I'll uh, ever own one, but maybe you never know. Never know. Mm -hmm. You never know. Um, by the way, Dave, what's your tone juice of the night? Tone juice of the night is um, from one of our listeners, Lagavulin Eleven Scotch. Ooh, Peter Urban got this for for me. Oh, hey Thank Peter, you, Peter. you got people a... sending you booze, man. Yeah, man, it's kind of crazy. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Right on. Uh, you know, it's funny. We started doing the show, and like, okay, and I don't drink all the time on the show, but occasionally we have some drinks or some good sure. booze, you know, some good scotch or good tequila or good something, you know. And uh, and then all of a sudden, it started to become a thing. People would bring me bottles of stuff, so I never right. have to buy anything. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Fucking great, man. So what do you yeah, think about like these guys? So tell me, guys, how does this work? How does this work? You got what's this super chat thing? People give you some bucks to help to answer keep questions. This thing going, yeah. yeah, that's what they do in order to ask questions. Well, yeah, if they, they really they, want their question answered, uh, that's the only way they're going to get an answer. It, go, it goes to the top. Yeah, it goes right. to the top. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, sometimes think, sometimes it's it's better than other times. You know, it depends on the on the on the deal. Yeah, well, that's the, pretty cool. Yeah, and Google you know, it helps. You know, like we do this for free. You know, basically. Right, I know. Yeah, and it, but it takes fucking dough, man. People it still don't takes that. a little bit of dough to pay for things, and it's still you know it's still nice if we get a you know a bottle here and there or something. You know? Yeah. Right, you know, well, for sure. we really appreciate yeah. it. We thank everyone for that. Thank you. Absolutely, um, I love yeah. doing it. It's a, it's fun. Peter, it's thank you for this. Courtesy of, this courtesy of my guy, great. fish man. This, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Oh, what was this, that? The botanist? What's that from? Botanist, it's yeah, man. Gin. Botanist, nice gin. Oh, nice. If you tried, oh, uh, got that from uh, Justin, my guy with my guy that works for Trey. Yeah. There's a. Oh. There's a gin, um, monkey, monkey something, monkey. Shit, what is that? Monkey paw. You had that gin? All right. It's mm, really good. No. By the way, Bob, I tried to Are get. Are you a uh, fan of Hendrix gin? Yeah, Hendrix, Hendrix is gin is awesome. Yep. I do martinis, yep. Hendrix gin, dirty with a blue cheese olive. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we tried to get Trey on the show, or I tried to get Trey on the show. Um, yeah, and I heard about that, and I'm sorry. What I don't know what blockage you got there, man. But he, it's no, wasn't from him. Believe yeah. me. Yeah, he, no, he is cool. a he is a saint. He is. Love a, to, if you, if you have a connection with him, love to have him on. I will. I'll let him know. I will let him know for sure. Okay, I'll do that. Fact, any of your guys that you think would you be know, man. You know, the, 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 I don't know who cut, shot you down there, but they're a great, they're a great organization, man. They're amazing. Yeah, I don't, I, I'd have to go back and look. I think it was they claimed they, they, his manager. That's what they claimed, but who knows? Probably. Well, they're the they're, they're good involved, people too, fun. man. They, they're cool with me. They they get me like um, codes for the live streams you know so i can watch them at home and stuff oh, they, awesome. they're re they're really cool that way so i don't know why yeah that that's fucked up i'll, I'll let him know man yeah please do because he be... loves talking about his shit 
I know. I've seen him on other stuff. It. Yeah, I know. I've seen him on yeah. other stuff. So that would be great. Um, he, he's, he's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, he did a bunch of stuff for John Mayer, too, right? Yeah, did. You know, he's a funny guy. But um, wait a minute. I know yeah. his tech now. You know, Jeremy? Yeah. Jeremy Nielsen? Yeah. Jeremy's great. He's really I've good. I've known Jeremy for a long time, like way back. So yeah, before way before John. Yeah, no, I worked with him with um, Foster the People. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Really good guy. He's a sharp, smart, tech. smart. Yeah, that was what he's. Un yep. Unlike most of them. <laughs> right. No shit. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So um, you're trying to explain something to someone and they're just like the tech is glossing over. They're oh, like, I know. Yeah, you like, know oh, you lost them dude, and you're just I, 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 to I, do it again I, later. All I all I told you to do was unplug the cable. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And you're on the other end of a line and he's in fucking Australia and you're in yeah. um, Los Angeles and right. Yeah. And he's going, yeah, 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 but he's thinking, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. That's Always funny. happens, man. Always, Always happens. Like, like, like even, okay, so you probably get this too. So you, you, you finished a rig for someone and you're explaining it to them, right? You're, you're showing them how to use it. And there's, there's, there's two ways it can go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there, there, there's, there's the... You explain it to them as simply as you could possibly think to explain it to them, and there's this Number look one. of horror in their eye. Oh yeah, and they don't understand anything you just said, even though yeah. you plainly made it as simple as possible. Oh yeah, or the opposite happens, and you're explaining it, and you see they're getting it instantly. And they're they're like, oh yeah, you mean like this, blah 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 blah, and they start punching the buttons, and this was it. You're like, oh god, thank god. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're you're like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I can I can I I, I can uh, uh, smarten up a little bit <laughs> when I'm telling you something because yeah. usually yeah. And you're like, I understand I understand you're actually understanding this. Okay, so. Now I can tell you a little more. <laughs> that's yeah. That's that's um, a, a godsend, basically. And, and, but it's it's so fucking rare. I found a godsend these days though is video. Yeah. Well. You make, yeah. You make absolutely. a video yeah, because you know, yeah through. because you go okay watch this then if you don't get it watch it again. If you don't get it, you watch don't it, get again. it then watch it again. And then if you don't get it then, well, just go in the bathroom and, you know, take your laptop with you and sit on the fucking toilet and keep watching. Watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. I remember the first time someone says, how about I just video you showing it to me? And I'm like, Brilliant. Oh my God, yes, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah. No, I remember there's a distinct time when like it just didn't like really kind of dawn on me. So I was so used for years to just showing people. Right. And then how can I just videotape you while you show me? Yeah. Oh See, yeah. What I wanted to do too is like I wanted to find all of those videos that I've made over the years and just throw them on YouTube just for the fuck of it. You know? And then maybe someone could sift through this shit. And, um, you know, find something pertinent to how to program, you know, or, you know, do stuff. Because they're, they're also, um, they're, they're unique to each individual's rig, you know, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that easy to have a generalized um instructional thing it's like mm -hmm. is there a manual for this well no 
but I'll answer any of your questions you have. And then I never hear from him. So. Mm. Interesting. Um, hey guys, I, I have to split, unfortunately. Um, it's getting late for me. Uh, I want to thank you, Bob, for coming on, man. Sure, man. Anytime. It's a pl pleasure. Sorry, guys, for the uh, the technical issues we had in the beginning. Dave and I are going to sort that out. Yeah, um, I need to figure out what. Yeah, maybe I need to buy a microphone or something. or I don't know what. I don't do this shit that often, you know? No, it, 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 I think the echo your, was actually your, on our your shop. Your it was pretty good. The internet was good at your shop, I think. Yeah, well, it's we probably did. better there for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um I mean I'm I'm on my I'm I'm on my nice camera, but I'm on my you know for some computer, reason computer something with my interface and my mic would cause stuff to echo and Mark's thing and yeah, it's but it never used to do that. We've done this for a hundred and odd some episodes. I know. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I lean on you guys to tell me what the fuck to do. You know. With this so I, I don't know. You know. So uh, I got to figure out what's going on with my fucking thing. So it's a strange thing. I don't know. But something um, changed, and I have to figure that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. but in any case, next show next week is next Friday. We've got uh, Andy Fuchs coming on. And then on the 31st, we've got James from what's the name of his company, Dave? I'm Rewind sorry. Electric. Rewind. Right. Who? Some, uh, James from Rewind Electric. He makes some great PAF kind of cool pickups. It's just, uh, oh, okay. That's yeah, cool. he makes, he's like well known for his pickups. And he also wrote a book about the life. On the PAF. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so um, it'll be. It'll be, It'll be cool fun, yep. you know. Nice. So that's that's uh, the month of March, guys. Um, for the for us, mm -hmm. a bunch of shows. And uh, Bob, thanks for coming on again, man. Really appreciate it. Sure, always, you bet. Always, always love having you on. And anytime, um, fellas. Definitely, you'll come on again for sure. Yeah, um, let me know when. You got it. Uh, everybody have a great a targeted topic next time, maybe. What's that? We'll get a targeted topic next time, maybe. You know, like something that's yeah. really. Okay. So we don't... All right. Well, I don't know what yet, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll figure Bob, it out. I agree. Bob's a cool cat. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Always. Oh, man, hey, you're, hey, the, you're, you're the there. originator. So you. Bye, fellas. That's it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hang on while we say goodbye. Just hang on one second. Okay. All right, everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk All right, to you. All right, see you guys. Take care. Yep. Yeah.